Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Today we've got a really, really fun one. We were joined by Mike Yagley from Cobra. He is a nerd, self-proclaimed nerd, um, and he talks all things Cobra Dark Speed for us, the innovation, the tech behind it, everything internal, as well as the cool look to the dark speed line as well. So stay tuned for that conversation. And golf results, before we get started, make sure if you haven't yet this year, go schedule that fitting at Second Swing, whether it's in-store or with one of the members of our online fitting and support team. They'll get you dialed in for a club like Cobra Dark Speed. So without further ado, we'll jump right into the interview with Mikey Eichley from Cobra. VP of Innovation at AICPG. So it sounds very scientific. Yes. Uh, so I need I need to get your background on what all that means. And uh, for, and also, uh, thank you for joining us as well. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and thanks for everybody who's listening and viewing. Uh, yeah, I'm a nerd. So aerospace engineer, went to <laughs> Iowa State, got my bachelor's and master's from there, focused mo- mainly on aerodynamics, um, did bombs, missiles, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, was working at Boeing on a high-speed civil transport. Worked on the 757. Wow. Flew into China in the world's highest commercial operating airport. Did all sorts of fun stuff. And then one day, there was a little bitty ad in the Seattle paper that said, hey, we're looking for an aerodynamicist in golf. And this is like an ad that big. And uh, it was with a golf ball company. And I looked at golf and I said, I get to be an engineer, play a game that I love, and solve problems. And I jumped and I've had a wonderful career in golf balls and now golf clubs. Um, And I can tell you and all the people out there, um, especially the technical people, golf is hard and I'm not whining. Okay. But (laughs) it is hard to solve problems like 3000 G's, 200 grams, got to sound good. Can't break. Got to have good aerodynamics. Um, So from an engineering standpoint, I'm in heaven. Got a great innovation team that I can see right there. And we are coming up with crazy ass stuff that goes in drivers through putters and everything in between. Um, I'm in heaven. Yeah, I mean, best job in the industry. It sounds like you've got everything that you're looking for. And it's like, even from my perspective as, as just a golf nerd, I mean, it sounds like you're kind of right in the midst of everything that I then find out later on, right, about all the, the what's the technology means, you know, all these different things that, you know, we're told about uh, these new products from Cobra, right? Um, it's, you're right into the nitty gritty of it, which is really, really cool. So, um, yeah, we today we're going to talk about dark speed. And for anybody viewing um, live on YouTube right now, obviously we had some technical difficulties early on. We apologize for that. But now if you're watching, please submit some questions or comments you have in the chat. And um, we'll spend a little bit of time at the end with Mike to review those. Um, but we first wanted to just dive into uh, the dark speed family. And um, because, you know, you guys have been continually taking steps forward, um, whether it's drivers, irons or anywhere in between just really elevating the performance of your clubs uh you know a lot of forgiveness on the off center hits as well has been key at least of what we've seen and heard from the fitters um, Mm -hmm. and club fittings and so kind of can you just give us sort of uh i guess an overarching story behind what dark speed is and what you know what the intent is behind that line for cobra uh it's a great question and so some of the answer is right there in the name speed um Mm -hmm. we know that speed is critical for delivering what golfers, you know, really want on a lot of their clubs, which is distance, especially when we're talking about the drivers. Um, But we also know that it's not just about distance. Uh, You mentioned forgiveness and Mm -hmm. we have to balance that need for speed, but you got to keep it in play. And because of that, we put technologies into the head and we can go as deep as you want. You can keep firing questions, right? In terms of things that enhance the mass properties, things that enhance the resilience properties, which means speeds off the speed off the face, things that enhance the aerodynamic properties, meaning reducing drag, which gets the club head to the ball faster. So I mentioned earlier, you know, like it's a very complex problem. So between balancing mm-hmm. the aerodynamics, with the mass properties, with the resilience properties, and making heads that work for multiple players in the LS and the X and the Max. Um, There's just a ton of technology inside and outside all of those. And we can dive 
You, you just keep firing questions and we'll dive. <laughs> but the main thing was speed. And then once we started looking at design things, it was like ominous, dark, um, things that I really loved. And if people have seen some of the, the content we put out. It's like Area 51, X-Files sort of stuff, aerospace right. engineer stuff. I mean, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I looked at all the marketing like, oh, hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's it's cool because I actually made a comment uh, to you before we, you know, hit, hit record. And it was, you know, as someone who kind of grew up a little bit and sort of was enamored by the Ricky Fowler connection to Cobra early on and, and how colorful he was and kind of bombastic about sort of the outfits with Puma as well. Uh, it was a little bit different to see a, a golf club lineup from Cobra not really have much color. Um, but to your point, I think there's a message behind that. Is that's you know it's kind of that uh, that ominous like there's a ton of speed um, and and I guess for the from the golfer's perspective, you know the golfer doesn't really care where it comes from as long as the speed is there, right? And that's where your guys' job is yeah. is to deliver it somehow. Yes, correct. You know the color thing, um, we did it for several years. A huge influence from you know Ricky personally and then Puma, and there were years we had like. You know, four different color drivers and that went really really well but as the years passed you know talking to you retailers consumers um they're like you know one color's okay and we heard it a couple times I'm like all right we're going to go to one color and it's going to be really badass so <laughs> it would just yeah, and it, it just kind of slowly morphed down to it yeah yeah and it has been i mean i know there's been kind of you know you guys have done your sort of one-off kind of unique limited edition uh models of the uh, you know, the, I guess the standard, uh, model that you released for that year, but overall, like for a dark speed, yes. there's kind of that, that, you know, that matte black, which I love, by the way, a matte black, uh, finish to that crown. Um, it's just, uh, it's a very, very like confidence inspiring, at least for someone like me look. Um, so let's kind of, let's kind of start with actually the drivers and just sort of break it down and then go, you know, we'll go drivers, fairways, hybrids, and down to the irons. And so, yes. um, with the drivers, there are three models. Um, it, I guess, I know you've done some updates to some of that in the internal structures, you know, power bridge. And then also you have your um, mm -hmm. AI designed hot face as well. Uh, so can you talk to me mm -hmm. about those technologies, where they came from? I know you've had some versions of them in the past drivers, you know, Aerojet, LTDX, um, and how they've maybe been yeah. changed in the dark speed series. That is a great setup. So we're going to start actually at the top of the swing. So the players like got the club right here and mm -hmm. their job is to get that club to the ball as quickly, accurately, right? And squared up to his target, his or her's target line as best as possible. So let's just start with the speed thing. So we have been looking at aerodynamics on golf club heads for several years. I'm an aerodynamicist. Here's the secret. I didn't think aerodynamics was going to make a whole lot of difference. I really didn't. And then about, I don't know, eight years ago, we started doing the math and we started doing a little bit of testing and found out that literally 90% of the energy that it takes to get the club from here to here is actually just moving the mass, which means 3% was aerodynamics. And I'm looking at that going, man, 3%, we're living in a world where a half a percent is a big deal. Okay. It's so like, so if we could reduce that 3% by half, mm -hmm. you could get a substantial increase in club head speed, like measurable. And so we started chasing aerodynamics. And we found that just streamlining it, rounding the leading edges, making the head smooth. When you look at our heads right now, they're very smooth from like all angles because that head is flying not just face on the whole time. It's flying at the hosel and then it rotates through to the face. So we've done everything we can to streamline that head. And you're going to see it's very symmetric, soft edges, not a lot of forward facing steps, all sorts of things to make it more aerodynamic. So we've done our job to get that club to the ball as quickly as you possibly can with the the energy or the work that a, a player has available to them. Okay, so we've got that solved. And we put as much aerodynamics as we could in the LS and the X and the Max. They're not the same heads and they're not supposed to be. And I'll tell you right. why here in a minute. Okay, so you've got the head to the ball and now the ball's on the face. Let's talk about the PowerShell face. And if you look at that, and you mentioned AI, if you look at it very carefully, and if you look on our website, and look at some of the images, that face is not a constant thickness. It has 15 distinct um, pads, we'll call it, on the face. And we optimized the thickness at each one of those pads to give players the most resilience, the best chance to get speed off of off-center hits, okay, to optimize the spin. 
And then there's a couple other things we have to do. It can't break, and it's got to conform to the USGA CT slash COR mm -hmm. rules, okay? So you put all that. When I mentioned before, like, engineering problems, that's a hell of an engineering problem, by the way. That, I, just that I, I face bet. Alone. I can't imagine what that's, oh, it, what, what that's like to go through. It's crazy. It is crazy. And, and I mentioned like a half a percent. Um, it's true with everything. We're talking fractions of a millimeter in thickness of the face. Wow. We're chasing quarters of a gram in the head and trying to put them somewhere else. We're chasing all sorts of stuff. Okay, so let's stick with the face. That face is about 13% bigger than it was in the Aerojet. And that's one of those kind of things, uh, corn to phrase, um, aggregate incrementalism. So if we can give you a little bit of speed from the body being more aerodynamic, a little bit of speed from the face, and then I'm going to keep going. A little bit of speed somewhere else, it all gets to add up, which is beautiful. So we've given you some club head speed. We've given you some speed off the face, all over the face. Now let's go, go inside the body. You mentioned the power bridge. Well, the power bridge actually originated from my innovation team. One of my guys, Bryce Hobbs, was looking at where the heck am I going to put all this extra mass that I have in this hybrid? Because hybrids, they're small, they're heavy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mass there. You don't want to put it in the body. You don't want to put it in the shell. You want to suspend it somewhere somehow. So he's like, I'm going to put a bridge in this darn thing. And that happened. And instantly, the driver guy sitting next to him going, I can use that in the driver. And so it is a very, very, um, I would say, elegant and ingenious way to put mass in a head low and forward without attaching it to critical areas. If you put that mass in the body low and forward, it's going to stiffen up that shell of the body. You're going to lose resilience. You want to attach it in places that aren't super critical. And if you look at our heads, you see that that power bridge is attached in a, the extreme toe and the extreme heel position, not near the center of the face. So you're freeing that face up so it can be more resilient. Okay, so we do that in the Aerojet. And it's a straight bridge. And as soon as the engineers are done, they're like, wow, you know, if I curved it and put it closer to the face and then lowered it and put it lower to the, to the sole, it's even better. We'll do that next time. So that would be one of those aggregate incremental mm. things where it's like, ah, it was a great, great thing in the Aerojet. How can we make it better? And we're always trying to make it better. We're always chasing more. We're always trying to make it just a little bit better in whatever we're doing. So now you've got a great combination of aerodynamics, resilience, and mass properties. And that is the, the foundation of each one of the heads. But the heads are very different. You mentioned them. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you don't mind, I'm just going to keep going. Okay? Yeah, please do. Please the, do. This is great. I'm yeah. learning. I, I mean, I'm learning a ton. And yeah. you've used some words that I know and some I don't know, but I think I get the idea. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the LS first. Um, that one is LS meaning low spin. And it's a little more compact. It's a little bit more aerodynamic, and the reason being is we've put so much mass low and forward, we can actually raise the trailing edge without killing the mass properties and give that player even a little bit better aerodynamics. Um, we did some crazy stuff to it, too. So Tom Olsowski is my counterpart. He leads the uh, R&D team, and he and Jose Miraflor, our product management guy, are like, mm -hmm. you know, let's put a back weight in the LS. And I'm like, what? You want to put a back weight in a front weighted driver? Come on, guys, don't screw up the really good physical properties of the Aerojet because it's a really good driver. And we looked at it and said, look, between putting the power bridge low and forward and everything else we can do to keep mass low and forward, we can afford to put a back weight in this thing. And the truth is there's an awful lot of players and there's probably some listening right now. It's like, man, I cannot spin it a low spin driver enough. I love the compact look. I love the feel. I love everything about it, but I need a little bit more spin. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you don't want to just chase it with loft. So put the weight in the back. You're going to get up to 300 RPM more spin, and that could be just enough to go from I'm living on a knife edge to I can hit this thing, you know, from 1700 RPM to 2000 or 2100. Right. And it's a big got difference. The launch angle, it works. It's yeah, it's a big difference. It's it's a very useful fitting slash I would say tweaking tool. Primarily, you want to put, get the face point in the right direction, right? Loft and lie, but then use those weights to like hone in that trajectory. So the LS, it's got a back weight location, it's got a heel weight location, and a toe weight location. And if you absolutely unequivocally 
do not ever, ever, ever want to watch your ball go left if you're a right-handed golfer. You put mm -hmm. that weight in the toe. It's going to be hard to make that thing go left. You feel like, ah, I, I want it to go straight and I'm okay if I, you know, it's a little tighter, you know, put it in the heel. You might be able to turn that over. And like I said, if you need a little spin, put the heavy weight in the back. And I would say primarily just have fun with it. Do not be afraid to play with those things. Adjust mm -hmm. the loft, adjust the lie, move the weights around, have some fun with it. They really make a difference. Okay. So that's the LS. Let's go to the X. Um, doesn't need to have the weight as far forward. It still is mm -hmm. biased a little bit forward, but doesn't need to be as forward because this thing is meant for the masses. This is meant for a person who's looking for like maximum distance and they need some forgiveness. They just flat out, I need some forgiveness. I'm going to wipe it all over the face. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also has a front and a back weight. And I would say the same thing with that. Play with it. Um, once you get the loft and the lie kind of dialed in, you got the right shaft, um, moving the weight in the back will increase the spin again, like 250 to 300 RPM. And it could be the difference between, okay, I really like this thing, but I need a little more spin. And now it's perfect. Again, that club is your playground. Um, don't be afraid to go out there and dink around with it. That's why we provide a wrench with that thing. Okay. And mm -hmm. work with your fitter, work with your fitter to get that thing dialed in. Um, and then you move to the max. So this thing is meant for the people that need, I'm going to say big help because it's a big headed driver. If it is, I need a lot of forgiveness. Okay. Or I really need to just kill that away from me, which would be to the right. If you're right-handed to the left, if you're a lefty, right, that dreaded mm -hmm. slice, um, this club handles both of them. You put the weight in the back setting and you've got a very, very forgiving driver. Um, you put it in the heel setting and you're going to knock like 11 yards just from moving the weight from, let's say it's a 250 yard drive, 11 yards or more just by moving the weight into the heel position. So those are your three drivers. You've got the LS, the X and the max. And if you put them on the table and you look at them and you're listening to what I'm saying right now, you look at it and go, wow, Yagley, I do see the difference here. This one, the LS is more compact, more streamlined, raised trailing edge. I go over to the to the max and the trailing edge is dropped because I need some more, you know, better mass properties and that mm -hmm. helps lower the CG for that design. And not as much aerodynamics, but that's okay because I, I need more mass properties. And then you got the one right in the middle, the X for the masses. Um, very purpose built designs, very I'll say useful designs yeah. for those players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you've talked a lot about the the fitting capabilities too that are available on these, and that's really one of the yeah. the, the favorite things of our fitters is that they can, you know, implement different weights on the on the sole, or of course they can use the hosel and, and adjust loft lie. So uh, the fact that these these drivers and then even the fairy woods and, and hybrid too have like those capabilities, I always makes it uh, you know makes them a favorite for our fitters just because that's their favorite thing to do right you mentioned toying around with it, having fun with it that is what yeah. they do for a living and they they love doing it uh to help people ultimately play better and so the fact that cobra has all of those capabilities packed in in addition to all the technology under the hood that you talked about um i mean you you have a a total package there with these drivers yeah and that is so funny because it as as a golf club guy, right? Innovation guy, making golf clubs, that moment that I can share in common with the fitter, because I've watched it. I've watched it when a fitter mm -hmm. works with someone and they go from hitting kind of crappy shots to, oh my God, they're lacing it, right? I just gained three miles an hour in ball speed, spin went down, it's launching beautifully, and I gained 20 some yards, and it feels great. I mean, it is so flipping rewarding for the fitter and for me watching that. So, yeah all you consumers out there go work with your fitter they're magicians mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i actually i have a question here that i think is pretty good for the um for the dark speed drivers and and i guess in the fairy woods too here and on mm -hmm. youtube is asking the difference between dark speed and the ltdx is there really much of a difference just a few yards here and there um what are we looking at with the difference between those two uh, i guess my uh, using context clues, I'm guessing Anne might have an LTDX club in her bag, and so she's kind of curious about potential upgrade. 
Interesting, Anne. That's a great question. That LTDX, um, that one's infamous. That one was a, and we've had people way outside the company, right? Some of the bloggers and the YouTubers, like that thing's a unicorn. That's a yeah. very, very good driver. Um, I would say you would have, I mentioned the incremental stuff, right? Um, you're going to get better mass properties with the dark speed versus the LX. I'm sorry, versus the LTDX. Um, you'll get more versatility because it's got a few more bells and whistles to dial it in. So I would go to a fitter and say, okay, I've got this LTDX, right? Just see if you can beat it with the dark speed. I have a very sneaky suspicion you will be able to just because the baseline alone has better mass, resilience, and aerodynamic properties. So that is going to be incremental each one of those, which will add up to something. And then the ability to dial it in a little bit better, um, it's worth giving it a shake. So, Ann, I mm -hmm. would definitely go try out the dark speed for all those reasons, baseline properties and tweaking properties. Yeah, I mean, that's it's very, very common for, right, for golfers to come in and they've got a driver that's two, three years old. Um, and it's still a very, yeah. very good club for sure. Uh, but, you know, there's always just the improvements that you mentioned about the dark speed series are still there and they're able to be taken advantage of by by golfers. So, yeah. um, all right. I kind of want to dive into the fairy woods now and maybe even the hybrids as well, because mm -hmm. fairy woods, I imagine the cadence on them is pretty similar, right? Between you've got kind of your low spin, you got kind of a max and sort of an X. Um, so can you kind of just yes. run through those? And, you know, if, if that is kind of the, the cadence, you know, maybe uh, I guess we can rerun through that and make sure there's no differences that we're missing there. Um, but otherwise, is there any key technologies in the fairy woods that uh, are, I guess, important for golfers to know? Yeah, there's one for sure. He says calmly, quiet voice. The uh, <laughs> LS is just a flipping rocket ship because yeah that that has been the number one comment by the way yeah. from the fitters is is that oh that low God. spin kind of fairy wood yeah. from the from the dark speed family is is kind of yeah. bonkers is really what they're saying bonkers i'd say stupid there's all sorts of things you could <laughs> say right cuz it's titanium which you don't typically see in a fairway wood that gives you the ability to make a very resilient face and the titanium inherently is much lighter than stainless steel which is typically what we use to make our fairways and our hybrids. Mm -hmm. So you get all this discretionary mass. And we've got massive chunks of tungsten low and forward in that um, LS fairway wood, which is giving the people what they're seeing, the tremendous ball speeds, low spin. Now, it comes in multiple lofts, so you can like adjust it, um, but it is just a flat-out rocket ship. And we're thrilled with that one. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I've talked to people that are using it off the tee, right? They're using it as a driver. It's like, oh, I can't hit my driver, but I sure can hit that that uh, LS really, really well. And it comes in um, three different lofts. So there's a three plus, a three wood. The three plus is centered around 13 degrees. They all have the, um, the MyFly sleeve in them. The, like I said, three plus is 13. The three wood is uh, 14.5 and the five wood is 17.5. Um, here's a pro tip for you. I'm not a pro. This is a nerd tip. <laughs> I put a three wood shaft in that five wood and I just flip and bomb it. Cause I'm, I'm, I've been blessed with low spin from birth and, um, I have to have high loft. So I use a five wood with a seven or with a three wood shaft in it and a seven wood with a five wood shaft in it. And those wow. are two of my favorite clubs in the bag. Yeah. So I've got the LS five wood and then the X seven wood. Um, they all, the stories I told you about the, the, the driver, right? Power bridge, power mm -hmm. shell face, aerodynamics, not that important. It's a much smaller head. Okay. Right. So they share the structural properties. Um, LS also has three weights, left, right, and one in the back. The X just has one because it, the head's so much smaller, it wasn't worth putting a front weight in that one. So it's just a back weight. And then the Max does have um, heel and um, back weight. But okay. very similar, right? Very similar yeah. to the the driver stories. LS, X, Max. LS, compact, X for the masses, and Max, big. I mean, it's big right. forgiveness, big draw. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's funny. We actually, you mentioned kind of using the LS as an off the tee club. We actually had a, a comment, well, a question from Eric in the YouTube chat as well, asking about what kinds of players does the Dark Speed LS3 would suit? 
um, versus something like a mini driver. You're see, kind of seeing maybe some mini drivers kind of entering the market a little bit. Uh, but I, I imagine based on what you said about the loft and things, the, the LS three wood, the dark speed can probably play a lot like a mini driver for players. Absolutely. You know, it's funny for years, people like, how come I can hit my fair with like, like a three wood or some people have like a three, three plus, there used to be two mm -hmm. woods, right? How can I hit that almost as far as my driver? And I think it's a lot of things. One super low CG, um, much smaller head. Uh, you can get a lot more club head speed out of something you think is going to be, you know, it's smaller and it just, you know, seems like it's just a smaller club, but you can get a lot of club head speed because it has a smaller frontal area, much smaller face. So you get a decent amount of, extra club head speed just from low mm -hmm. air or low drag. Um, I think there's a huge human component also. Focus, focus, focus. You're looking down, it's a much smaller head. You're going to hit that more in the center. I mean, I've looked at this way too. If a player were to use as much face on a three wood as they do on their driver, they miss a bunch of shots. Many players would just miss them. I mean, they <laughs> right. come off the yeah. top, off the sole. So there is definitely is a focus element. And all of that adds up. And that's why players hit their three woods, like off the tee especially, a very long way. I've done it for years. I've got one in the bag. Well, I've got a five wood. It looks like a three wood now. Um, I think that's a big part of it. And mm -hmm. then just the physics of those heads are really, really good. For yeah, I mean, clearly, right? Speed, I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing all spin. that speed, oh, yeah. performance. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. again, like I mentioned, yeah. the, the fitters are... are can't say enough about especially that LS head that you mentioned. That was it was cool that you kind of right yeah. out of the gate said, Well, this this LS titanium head is is something else. And that was exactly the feedback that we've gotten from the fitters. So um it's and then, crazy stupid good. I'd say one more thing to answer mm -hmm. um, what was his name again? I'm sorry. It was Eric. Um Eric, Eric. One other thing, um the three wood and the three plus, you'll still be able to hit him off the fairway, right? And a mini driver off the deck could get a little dicey. Mm -hmm. So that's, I just I just point. see this type of three wood just being a little bit more versatile in someone's bag. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because those mini drivers are just some of them are just big enough where, you know, it, it takes a certain yeah. skill set, a certain swing to kind of still hit it off the deck uh, consistently. Right. So um, that is a yeah. good point there. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, too, as we get into uh, kind of the hybrids is, mm -hmm. well, first of all, the, the, the dark speed hybrids, the uh, the quantity of loft options that you guys have. Uh, from 17 to 28 degrees, and then if you actually talk about the uh, the women's uh, hybrid as well, you can go up to 31. And so, uh, kind of the the vast array there was that something. I obviously you guys did it on purpose, just to kind of is it serving a sort of a need for hybrids out there, or um, I guess what was sort of the um, you know the goal behind that? Because there's a ton of options, and it's great for our fitters, by the way. Yeah, it's you know it's a need for options, and you know I'm look you mentioned it already. It's like the need for loft. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, like with drivers, people are like, oh, I don't want to see a number on my driver of a loft, you know, more than like 10, right? Because they just, mm -hmm. they have issues with big numbers. But when you get to the fairways and hybrids, it's like, hmm, I'm okay with it because you need it. It's It makes a very, very versatile club. Um, you just mentioned, I mean, we have five options in the the men's, right? The variable length men's from 17 mm -hmm. to 28, 2H to 6H. Um, if someone, because the deal there is, You'll have, and the fitters say this, and consumers know this too. It's like, hmm, I need a 185 yard club. At my course, I have like four of those around, right? And I can't quit, quite hit my five iron that far. So, what is it? That's when you go in with your fitter, right? And you figure out, you know, what the loft is, what the head is, because, um, and the club. Fairways perform very differently than hybrids. Some people are, you know, hybrid sort of guys or gals and some people are fairway guys or gals i'm more of a fairway guy i'm fine with that but getting the right club with the right loft that gives you the distance you're looking for is just critical that's why we have so many options um mm -hmm. same is true like with the fairways and the hybrids now right if right. anything i'm hearing people say more lofts i'm literally hearing more lofts i'd love it if somebody's thinking that put it in the chat it's like yeah yagley nine wood eleven wood Right. <laughs> right. I want to hear I mean, it. those are becoming yeah. so popular. I mean, uh, you, you, yeah. I mean, whether it's on tour, I mean, I, I think it says something right that on tour, these guys are the best players in the world. Uh, you know, every week they're playing for potentially millions of dollars. Right. But 
They're not. Yes. They're they're they've gotten past the ego part, right? Where they don't uh, seven wood, nine wood. I don't need those, right? You're seeing a ton of those on tour, and obviously they're yes. probably a better fit for I guess the masses, so to speak, of you know the the amateur golfer. And so, uh, yeah. six hybrids, five hybrids, it's, seven woods. They're all becoming yeah. more and more popular and more uh, in our fittings too. Yeah, it's it's a really. I mean, this will be the most complicated technical answer I give you right now. Okay. I'm ready for it. They work. <laughs> they work. That's it. They work. Right? Yeah. All right. That's why I'll take the, the I'll take that note quick. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They work. People need to try them. Yeah. Boy, yeah. The whole, you just mentioned that. Check the ego with the door thing. Oh, my gosh, yes. Look at Ricky Fowler now has more loft on his driver than I think he's ever had in his life. And he likes seeing it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all sorts of players have high lofted drivers. And putting, like you just mentioned, high lofted fairways and hybrids in the bag. They're easier to hit. The physics are better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. There's, there's, okay. I mean, it, it's very clear. You can kind of, you can, you see the, the added weight behind and below the, the club head, right? There's just, and then, yeah. I mean, you, you do a, a little bit of testing in a, in a fitting bay and you see that higher launch, that, that steeper landing angle, all of those things that come with a higher lofted wood or hybrid um, that you won't get with really any type of iron, um, no matter how oh, yeah. you know, game improvement it is or, or, you know, uh, forgiving it is right. So, um, there's a little bit of that there that, you know, I think, I, I think we're sort of transitioning into that in just overall in golf, just more of those less three irons, less four irons and more of these higher loft clubs. Oh yeah. We did a test a while back where we had people hit what would be the equivalent clubs, right? So let's say it was oh, a hybrid yeah. versus an iron or a fairy versus a hybrid, right? Or fairy versus an iron. And it, it was hands down. I mean, you could see the data and people like, Oh boy, the the consistency of left, right, and distance, so front and back, with the fairways and the hybrids was way higher than the lower lofted longer irons for almost all players. There's still some unicorn players out there that can hit the lower lofted long irons. They can hit them, right? Yeah. Good on them. But for most players, it was like hands down, the metal wood, hybrids or fairways were way more consistent, way more accurate. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's always a conversation we have, um, in the fittings, you know, our fitters are always talking about where do you feel comfortable maybe transitioning to a hybrid or to a fairy wood, you know, and it's, it's always yeah. kind of nuanced, right. It's depending, dependent on the player and the swing and everything, but, um, kind of on that end and we can kind of turn transition to the irons here, um, is, mm-hmm. you know, first of all, to make that transition and make it seamless, you have to also know, that your iron set is dialed in and you have the right uh the right model the right performance and the dark speed irons um are kind of first of all i gotta like i really like the new look to them like the kind of the unique sort of darkish grayish finish to them um mm-hmm. that's a little bit different in the past but i love that but second of all really good performance in those irons too thank you i'm i'm looking out at all the engineers and designers because i'm i i look out yeah um and and they're all right in front of me and I can tell you they work their asses off to mm-hmm. do what you just said, right? I mentioned the, the aggregate incrementalism before with the metal wood. Same thing is true with the irons. It's like, okay, we made a really good aerojet. How are we going to make it better? Okay, what is better? Can we improve the feel a little bit? Can we get a little more speed out of this thing? Can we get a little more speed but make it more playable too? Because uh, shame on us, like literally shame on us, We've been chasing distance at the sacrifice of playability, and I, all manufacturers have been loft jacking, right? Mm-hmm. And to help counter that, we're dropping the center of gravity as low as we possibly can. That's why we use the power bridge weighting in this, okay? Um, and we actually increase the loft on the dark speed relative to the aerojet because, like, you know what? We can give them the ball speed. We can give them the spin they need. We do not have to loft jack. Let's make this thing a little bit more playable. And we've heard that from pretty much everyone. Like, wow, you kept the speed. Feel looks great or feel sounds great. um, And it's more playable. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when someone's trying to hit a 157-yard shot, they want it to go 157 yards, right? Right. And uh, we're we're doing our best to make that an enjoyable club. longer than they probably, you know, played in the past, especially if they haven't, you know, bought a set of irons for three or four years. Okay. And uh, the cool thing too, is I mentioned the feel 
we went out of our way to make sure that these feel good. They don't feel like a, a typical kind of harsh game improvement sort of iron. Um, the dark tone of it makes it look a little bit slimmer, um, a little bit more player-ish. So when you look at that whole package between the, the technical stuff that we put in it, hollow body with foam, power bridge weighting, power shell, very similar to the driver, okay? All that adds up to an iron. Like I said, now I'm babbling. Looks <laughs> good, feels good off the face, performs good, and I can stop it. What more would you want in an iron? You're, you're checking all the boxes, I yeah. think, right there. You know, just check, yeah. check, yeah. check. Um, yep. That's exactly what a player w- would, would be looking for. And I even have seen, too, I know that even on tour, now granted, this isn't, right, a, a club that you're probably designing for tour players, but, but you're seeing uh, some of those people, you know, they're, they're playing it in even the longer irons, you know, three iron, four iron of, of dark speed and, and irons like this. It's that way they can kind of get all the things you mentioned, that, that speed, that distance that they might be looking for um, at the top of the bag. Um, yeah. Ricky played a game improvement iron for a couple of years, right? They've mm-hmm. all considered it especially in those long irons, everything you just said, it's like, you know, why wouldn't you want to play an iron that is forgiving, gives me the distance I need, feels pretty damn good. Um, They work. They work. No, I mean, that's exactly it. I did it. Yeah. I I had a mix of game improvement irons into King Tour for a couple of years. So whether it was the Aerojet or the Rad Speed, you know, whatever it was, like I mixed them because I just, I needed the help with the longer irons, right? Yeah, I didn't need as much help with the shorter irons. Um, yeah, the physics are there; re- they really, really work. Yeah, I, and I think we have to touch on another one too. We got a couple comments in the chat asking about yeah. the one length concept, and so because uh, specifically, I know you know like the the long or the uh, the lie angles, excuse me, are a little bit different there, and sort of the just making sure the gapping works throughout the set, and so. Um, I guess, first of all, if someone was maybe considering one length, um, you know, what would they, I guess, why would they be a good fit for it or why should they try it out? Um, and then number two, if could you maybe speak on some of those spec differences uh, that players should expect um, if they were to go into a one length set? That's a great, great question. So let's start with the why, okay? Mm-hmm. If someone is truly new to the game, they're a beginner, or they, maybe they're playing for a little while. They still consider themselves a novice or a beginner. Um, having one consistent setup, and I say one-ish. The marketing people may say it's one swing. Eh, it's not one swing because the intent's different between a five iron and sure. a pitching wedge. It's just, but it's kind of one-ish. Um, being able to groove that swing over those clubs, and I'd say I'd recommend like the full swing clubs. So it's let's say five iron through pitching wedge. I have seen it firsthand multiple times. They try to get fit for the seven iron, does what it does. They go to the one length five iron and hmm, it's more consistent because it's the same length as the seven iron, same mm-hmm. weight, everything feels the same. So, you know, you're dialing this thing in. Then they go to the nine iron and it's more consistent at a longer length than a progressive length nine iron, a, like the variable length nine iron, which is about wow. that much shorter. And I'm looking at it going, okay, I get it now. I wouldn't have predicted that. I would not have predicted it. But it does make sense. You're grooving your swing. So if Mm -hmm. someone's starting out, it's a great way to, like, simplify things. If someone hasn't played for years and they're like, holy crap, i got to get back into golf and haven't played for 20 years, another great opportunity. If someone um, literally has physical ailments, I mean, guys and gals with back problems, if they're in one position and they're not, like, bending over for the shorter irons, it actually has made a big difference. Um, a lot of junior golfers. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Um, it is honestly our least returned set of irons. If really? Someone, yeah, if someone buys a set of irons from a, a retailer or you know partner of ours that says, hey, we'll give you a 90-day return and bring it back and we'll give you store credit, um, the one-link irons aren't returned very much at all um once they get into it like holy crap this works so let's get into why it works and the specs okay you can't just take a five iron and put a seven iron shaft in it it's not gonna work you've got to um add some weight to it um 
once we got into it, and it's about 20 some grams you got to put into it. You got to take about 20 some grams out of a pitching wedge, okay? So if they all have basically the same weight. What we found with the long irons, you do swing them slower. So you're going to lose distance. You just have to. That's physics, okay? So let's say you hit your five iron normally 180 yards. You hit a one length five iron if it is a progressive length head about 170 yards. You're like, you lose 10 yards. You're like, well, crap, I can't do that. Well, we put the mass back into it to get the weight up and you gain like half of that back. And then we are able to make the center of gravity lower because we're putting the mass low. Oh, you get like two more yards back. And then from center to contact, like you just, like you're, you're striping it, right? You're grooving mm -hmm. that swing. You get another couple yards back. So you have almost gotten back everything you lost from club head speed. That's the physics of it. And a ton of players will say that to the point where we have been using Arcos now for years. We had enough players in the database where they were playing a progressive length set of clubs, right? So variable length, we'll say. So the variable mm -hmm. length set of clubs, and then they switched to one length. And after enough rounds, we're like, look at their data. And I'll be darned, the percentage increase in greens regulation was substantial. It was literally like 40%, which I would have, wow. I would have taken the under on that. Yeah. And uh, there was the data make, and it does make sense, right? They're delivering it more consistently. They got more consistent contact. Well, mm -hmm. it's going to fly more consistently, which means you're going to hit more greens. Um, so there's the, the who and the why and the result. Yeah, they're not for everybody. I'm not gonna lie, they're not for everybody. That's why right. we make all sorts of different irons. But if you're thinking to yourself, man, that kind of makes sense. It's worth a shot. Golf pun yeah. intended. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and there's and that we should also know too that sure, dark speed is available in one length, but also there's a ton of Cobra sets from past generations, past years that we have at Second Swing yes. that you can get fit into, um, or you can you yes. know, check out our selection. Uh, tons of one length options. So if you don't want, say, the, you know, more forgiving game improvement model of dark speed, there's obviously other ones out there um, for you to look at that might be yep. a little bit more compact or kind of fit your eye a little bit better. Yep. So, uh, but clearly there's yep. something behind that one length concept. Um, and you guys are seeing the data and the results it's with Arcos, uh, which, uh, by the way, is an awesome tool that I use myself. Cool. Yeah, it really is. I mean, if you don't measure something, you have no idea what to do, how to fix it. Right. Whether right. it be building your house or playing golf. Right. Measure twice, cut once. I would say the same thing in golf. Getting that yeah. data and understanding where the holes in your game are, where your strengths are, is huge. And mm -hmm. we are proud to still offer that system. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's fantastic. Um, if you're cur just curious about statistics of your game, uh, that part's for me, that's the dirtiest part about me, I think. Um, is just learning, looking at all the stats on there. So, um, all right, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna kind of start to wrap up here, Mike. It's been awesome, by the way. Thank you yeah. for your time here. I know we're getting close to the sort of the top of the hour here, but um, I have a couple more questions in the chat here. I just wanted to run by you as mm -hmm. people uh, want to submit their final questions. We have a ton already, so I'm not gonna get to all of them, uh, but I do have one here. Uh, this is from uh, if I'm a blue tough guy on YouTube. So, uh, but he's asked he's uh, comparing asking for a comparison. Uh, he's going to try the dark speed driver. He's still gaming an F9. So maybe just some some differences there between those two. I know we talked about LTDX, uh, but maybe some differences there yep. between those two. Oh man, these people are tugging on my heartstrings. I literally was having a conversation this morning about like what what are you most proud of in golf? And that F9 is very near the top, by the way, because yeah. it was like the first combination of like low CG, good aerodynamics. Like that thing was a sorry, it was a bitch in golf club. Um, <laughs> so here's what I'm saying. So it was a blue. What was blue? What? Blue tough guy. Uh, I don't. It doesn't have a. Blue re, tough uh, guy. Uh, you know. Yeah. We'll call. Okay. We'll call him. We'll call yeah. him tough guy. Okay. Okay. Hey, tough guy. Um, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, you're gonna have to try two of them. You're gonna have to try the LS and the X because they overlap just a tiny bit. And and that makes sense because, you know, you've got a driver that is designed for, you know, compact, low spin, but it's got a back weight setting that can drive the spin up a little bit. And then in the X, 
if the weight's in the forward setting, that's relatively low spin too. So they kind of overlap just a little bit. So now you have a choice between, okay, mm -hmm. the look and the feel and the sound of an X and the look and the feel and the sound of an LS. So tough guy, you got to go try them both, okay, and have fun doing it. Um, you're not going to wear yourself out. You'll be able to figure it out in 20, 30 swings, right? I know you're capable of it because you, if you're playing the F9, you're a player, dude. Yeah, yeah. try them both. I yeah. like that. I like oh, that. Oh, and I would say this too. From a fitting standpoint, don't assume that the shaft you have in your F9 is going to work in your LS or your X. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like work with your fitter because, you know, we move the CG around a little bit. And if the weight's a little bit different, it could require a slight shaft change. So go into it, tough guy, totally open minded. Like, I love just that. Take your F9 in there and just see if we can beat it with an X or an LS in the right shaft. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Tough guy. Thank you for the question. Um, and uh, yeah, I got, awesome. I got, I got one more here from Kyle. So Kyle is currently playing. I see. He says, I play Cobra F eight one length irons. I hit them very well. Is the dark speed worth the upgrade for me? I'm a 12 handicap with a 92 mile an hour, seven iron swing speed, or should I be looking at forge tech one length instead? Ooh, great question, man. I'm, I'm going to sound like a sales guy now. You got to try them both, right? You do because <laughs> you're in a fitting. When you're in a fitting. It's like, okay, um, how many swings you got? You could, you could handle some iron swings. I would try them both and start with seven iron. You're already a one length guy, right? And check out the feel and the flight differences between the two. And mm -hmm. there will be some flight differences because the, and he mentioned Forge Tech, right? Um, yes. Forge Tech. Forge Tech is going to, mm, I hate to say shorter. Let's just say the dark speed is going to be a little longer, okay? <laughs> there right? you go. Because it's going gener it's gonna, it's gonna to generate some more ball speed, right? And here's what I would check. In that 7-iron, make sure that you still have enough stopping power, right? And I'm talking at least 43 to 45 degrees of entry angle at the end of the flight, and if one of those two doesn't give it to you, I'm like, ooh, man, that's you're getting into like danger zone. So, yeah, look, feel, and make sure it's still playable, okay? Because you've got some decent club head speed for a seven iron. That's not mm -hmm. an issue. I want yeah, that thing to we, be playable for you. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. there's no shortage of speed yeah. from Kyle, so I think it's a, a definitely no, a spin no. thing too. You know, you got to make sure the spin no. rate is there and the landing angle things that you mentioned um, yeah. would be key in that yeah. fitting session. Make it I imagine. Playable. So. And they're both good irons. They're very different, right? The, right. The Forge Tech is going to be a little more compact, look a little more player-ish, right? And those mm -hmm. are two things, two great irons to try. Yeah. Yeah. When you said Kyle, sure. like, oh my God, is this Berkshire? Is this Carl? Huh. Carl Berkshire's on this line? Yes. No, I mean we'd be talking <laughs> completely different about swing speed and things. I bet with with Kyle. So, uh, I bet oh that's an gosh. entire conversation in itself on building clubs for it, for that guy. So. <laughs> it, it, you know what? You want to do that conversation sometime? I, we can fill up an hour. That guy is. I, a I'm, beast. I I bet yeah. we could. Uh, I always yeah. see this, his yeah. videos on TikTok. He's playing some course, you know, in the mountains, and it's like, all right, I'll play this par five, 630 yards, driver, 420 yards, pitching wedge, 200 yards, eagle putt, make it. You know, that seems to be it's what what Kyle does. Crazy. <laughs> you know what's cool though? We have learned so much working with him. Um, he has really oh, helped yeah. us with the creation of our golf clubs, um, and. I will say also creation of something that you're going to see very soon, Ooh. very Ooh, okay. soon. Oh, Little yeah. teaser. we're not even going to talk about it. Oh. Holy cats. Oh, my. My leg's shaking right now. You probably see me <laughs> shaking. It's, <laughs> it is really exciting. I mean, okay. really exciting. And it's coming right. soon. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have our eyes peeled yeah. for that one. Uh, but, yeah. uh, Mike, we'll, we'll leave it there. I appreciate you taking the time. This was a ton of fun to talk dark speed with you. Um, and, you know, once again, we had to do it just because I know really it, it stemmed from all of the, the feedback we've gotten in the fittings from the fitters. And so uh, to kind of hear the, the science behind it from you was, was really cool. Um, and I know the viewers that have watched already um, have loved it. And then, of course, we'll keep it on YouTube for more um, for more eyes as well. So, uh, Mike, thank you again for joining. I uh, really appreciate the time and, and the discussion here. Uh, really great stuff. Hey, Drew, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. And for all the listeners and watchers out there, right, go get fit, right? Absolutely. And then go play a lot of golf and have fun doing it. Just go have fun.
Awesome. Yeah, go get that fitting. Thanks, subscribe to the channel. Yeah. And uh, go check out Dark Speed, whether it's drivers, all the way irons, maybe even one length. And uh, we'll see you next time yes. on the YouTube channel.